Deb, how are you doing today? Welcome. <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for, for joining, joining me. Today, we're going to talk about your knowledge panel for your brand, your personal brand. Okay. And I have here what I see on google.com when I Google your name. And I see your website here on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you're missing a knowledge panel. And I'm going to help you with that today. And aiming to hopefully get you to something. Oops, there's that that pinging. <laughs> hopefully get you to something similar to Karen Brady here. And to achieve something like this, there'll be a number of tweaks you'll need to make on your sites. So I'll take you through that today. So firstly, on your website, a knowledge panel ideally requires three things. I'll give you the overview and then delve into each one. One is to have, the first thing is to have an entity home, essentially the page on your, a page on your website that you use for your knowledge panel essentially to build the authority of that page and um, inform Google by several means that this page should be used as the authority for your knowledge panel. The second thing is to have what we can, what we call an entity description of your brand, your name. And the third thing will be to corroborate this information. So let's delve into each one. On knowledge panel, there are ideally two pages, two types of pages we use for it. You can essentially use any page on your website, but in your case, two in particular work out really well, either your homepage or your about page. Now your homepage, it tends to be used or the homepage tends to be used more for marketing to users, right? So I would actually recommend using your about page as your entity home for your knowledge panel, which is um, great in the sense that you already, you already have an about page. You just need to make certain tweaks to it. So that's the first thing there. Your knowledge panel, your entity home is your about page. And as I delve into the second um, point, you'll see why I'm recommending your your about page. Okay. Your entity entity description. So for this, I'm actually going to browse across several pages and I'll show you an illustration of an entity description. Okay, so let's use Jolie here. Entity descriptions on knowledge panels, they tend to follow a specific format. It tends to be written in third person. And the first sentence is always, it follows the format of subject, verb, object. An example illustration is Jolie Jenkins, subject, is, a verb, and actress, object. Mm -hmm. So... And this is why I am recommending using your about page because you can use that. You can have your description in third person on that page. And, and another illustration here, you'll see most knowledge panels, 99% of knowledge panels that I've come across follow this format, subject, verb, object. And it does so for the first sentence of your description. You can then use the... Um, second or third sentence to elaborate on, on that. Maybe mention who you, the audience you, you service, the audience you serve. And the reason we have entity descriptions in this format is because at the moment, the more explicit the information, the clearer it is for Google and all search engines. So on your site, on your entity home, ideally, if you can tweak this, maybe remove it because you already have it on your homepage. So you don't necessarily need it on here. So you can keep this information on your homepage um, more for your users and have your about start from where you have your name here. I suggest having your full name um, on here. So instead of just saying... Oh. Deb is uh, tr a transformational coach. 
have it as your okay. f- full name. Again, just being more explicit to Google. What Google will do is they will pick this description, this first paragraph, as um, as you have it here. The first sentence, use subject, verb, object with your full name. And then the um, the rest of the, the um, sentences can be as you as you like. So that's the second thing. The third thing is to then have this description corroborated across the web. Now, let me delve into this. When Google lands on this page, they'll want to identify who you are as an entity. An entity is essentially a name, place, or thing. In this case, it's your personal brand. They'll want to identify and get an understanding of who you are. And with this explicit information, with the first sentence, once you update it, it will inform them of who you are. They will then um, go across the web and try to see if this information is in their eyes true. And this is where corroboration comes into place. And the ideal strategy with your entity description is to use a similar description across your social media platforms. And I always encourage people to appropriate your description to the platform. An example of this is if you're on LinkedIn and you have your description in first person, that's fine. Um, Ideally, it should be as consistent as your description on your entity home. The, The more consistent it is, the easier it is for search engines to um, consider your entity as a true entity. Okay, so can I ask a quick question? Sure, go for it. So I understand what you just said about the description should be consistent. Mm-hmm. Okay. Should it be the exact same thing? Or is it okay if you start off each one with like the daddy is a transformation coach, blah, 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 and then go into it and then some of the other stuff gets switched around or so, keep it, keep it consistent with what you're actually saying, period. Don't, don't mess around with it. <laughs> so the, there are different, it's, um, I would need to qualify the, um, um, response to, 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 to the question. The first sentence is the most important. So the one that you have as subject, verb, object, Deb Dowie is who you are. That is the one that's important. That's the, what Google uses for corroboration mainly. And if you can have that as consistent across the web, um, that would be great. If you have, let's say, a paragraph which has three sentences and that first one is consistent, the other two are not across the web, that's also fine. It's also fine if you have, let's say, one or two that are um, less the same uh, across the web. So if that first sentence is in written in first person, that's also fine. That's, this is why I like to say, have it appropriated to the platform you're on. You might have it consistent on LinkedIn and Twitter. On Instagram, you might have it written in first person. So, yeah, always use the platform as the guide. And the first sentence is the one to be, um, that should be consistent. Okay. Now, If we have another look at Google, I notice you don't yet have site links on um, on for your site. Uh, Site links. Let me give an illustration of it. Is something similar to this, where you have your main page listed on top, and then cascaded underneath it are the different pages or the most important pages in the eyes of Google also listed on your um, underneath your main page, usually the home page. Yours is something um, slightly different where you have links. These are slightly different to site links. They're not cascaded down. 
And I had a look across your site and I noticed the main links you have on your site are navigational links. These links. Right. right that's here. yeah, that's how we that's how we set it up. That's how Brian and I set it up. That's so <laughs> this this is great as a way of having um mainly for users. Um, search engines use it also, as you can see here, but they will tend to mm -hmm. use it in this format. To one of the ways of attaining site links, which as a reminder or something like this, will be to have internal links as contextual links. These are links on your site within the copy, linking to other pages. And this is where we can be more strategic with our approach here. And I believe it was, let's go into the self-sabotage, um, stop the self-sabotage page. So mm -hmm. now that's a, one of my, sorry. Go, ahead. go for it. Go for it. That's, that's one of my, um, so I have a hidden page that's for my hypnotherapy course that I give out the links to people that are interested. So I, I will eventually have it on there. I just ran out of <laughs> toolbars. Um, that self, stop the self sabotage. That is a consistent um, workshop that I do. Mm. I just probably have to change the dates, but that's why I leave it up. Okay. Um, let's change the speaking one for illustration. Um, if you can have internal links as contextual links, so links within the copy itself, um, linking to other pages, that will have a better flow of internal links across your site. So you wouldn't just have navigational links right here at the top. You'll have contextual link, contextual links within the copy itself. Contextual links, okay. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to have to figure out or even ask Brian or I don't know. Actually, I don't know that he knows that either because this is how we set it up. So how do you put a contextual link in? I guess I'm not, and I understand conceptually what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand where not to put you. a link in. So on your CMS. I, I just had it. On your CMS, you essentially just need to, so if you wanted to have this as your anchor text, it's called an, in, in the, it's called an anchor text link, um, which is also a contextual link in this case. But if you wanted this as your anchor text, so your name, Deb Dow, um, Dowie, you just have to, um, highlight it and within your CMS link to your about page. It's very, it's, it's very straightforward. It's like linking, having an anchor text link in a documentation or an email or something. It's, yeah, it's, okay, it's very so, straightforward. Okay. So if we look up, if we were to look up some resources on anchor text link, how to do it, then that's what, that's what the actual name is. Anchor text link. Yeah. Put in an anchor, put in an anchor text link on a page. Something like that should, okay. should pull it up okay okay sorry Bye. that's okay so that is one of the two additional things i wanted to mention the second thing i wanted to mention is uh just having a basic or more straightforward op optimization across the site would be ideal the about page for example about Deb is very similar to this speaking page. And you can see mm -hmm. with the, if I were to go into Google, so I just search for your site on Google um, itself and it's pulled up your, the pages on your site. And you can see here, this is the about page. This is the speaking page corresponding to this page and this page, mm -hmm. the um, meta title, and I don't want to get too, <laughs> too deep in on in, in into the um, technicals. Um, but 
one of the things here is the meta title is exactly the same. So essentially you haven't optimized the page, the pages to be unique enough. Okay. And if you're aiming to build the authority and of the about page and have Google use this page as the one for your um, knowledge panel, ideally you want it to be unique in that sense. So the copy as well as the uh, title optimization, if you can also change the uh, meta description, um, that will help make the page more unique in the eyes of Google. So initially your meta, your knowledge panel will sort of um, sprout and it will be something similar to, to, to this, where you have the about um, information about who you are and you will have, once you have your knowledge panel sprouted, you'll have this claim this knowledge panel icon. If you were to click on it, it will then take you to a form that you have to fill. It's just a one page form with um, five or so questions. This is a way oh, for that. Google to uh, confirm or have you confirm your identity. And you have to confirm your identity with an official documentation, uh, your passport or driving license. Uh, you'll have to hold that documentation with <laughs> on on um your screen so that it shows that you're holding it and this is just a way no, gotcha, to, gotcha. this is a way for google to ensure no one can claim someone else's knowledge panel right once it sprouts trying to see that yeah and time wise mm -hmm. we're looking at so usually it takes roughly six to nine months for it to sprout um, in your case, because you have maybe one or two things to do in addition to it, I reckon it will be more towards the nine months uh, period. And this is nine, nine yes, yeah, six to nine months, but more more around the nine months period. This will be after you've implemented the recommendations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Two more things. In terms of the third step, having your uh, corroboration, a really good tip is to use the sources that are already ranking, uh, that are pertinent to you. In this case, your uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. Those will be two sites that I absolutely recommend you updating to be uh, consistent with your description entity description again ap appropriate uh, uh, appropriating it depending on how you um how you are on those platforms whether it's first or second or third person okay all right let me try so to I'll have to go back. I'm like, I, I think I do do Deb Dowdy is, you know, or Deb is or that instead of I, I, I believe I do that in system. Pretty sure. Definitely have to check in it. Uh -huh. And then I am, <clears throat> gosh, I'm so sorry. I am, um, I'm, um, recently on Instagram and but that's like in the last few months and I really don't do a whole lot on it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I tend to be one of those people that are really, really more busy with clients and working with my clients and doing mm -hmm. the back office things with my clients and all that. And then those things are the last thing that I wind up getting to because I stay pretty consistent, busy with serving clients. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not so, saying so. that that's a bad thing. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's not. However, I do know that those things are important too. So it's a matter of really, um, 
doing them consistently. But yeah, I can definitely make sure that I have my description across the, the board right. Yeah, just ensure you have your first and second name. At the moment, it's very vague because there are a million and one Debs around. Debs, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. The aim of this explicit description is to ensure that Google has, or Google, you, you give search engines um, access to the information that you want them to have, and you make it easy for them to understand it. The clearer it is for them, the um, quicker and uh, better they'll be able to um, have confidence in their understanding of who you are. This way, when someone searches for, uh, when someone searches for you, Google will know they're searching for you rather than a different Deb Dowie. Okay. Okay. And I will have to figure out a way because I, I actually very much get what, and thank you, I get what you're saying about my about and the speaking page is pretty much the same as far as the very beginning goes. Yeah. I just have to figure out a way. I just have to figure out a way then to, I guess, take it off this the speaking end of it. However, there's sometimes I give people just the link to the speaking tab, which I know they can go and learn, you know, about and they can flip flop through it. But sometimes I just give them the speaking tab. I, and that was my concern about. I recommend keeping the pages. I, I see the uses of them. Um, deleting pages can be quite um, detrimental. Well, that's a strong word. can be quite harmful for your overall site authority and how you show up on Google. Uh, this is a very useful page for users. It's just a matter of tweaking the content on there. So think of a page, appropriating a page for what the page is. The about page is about who you are. This page for your users, this page, speaking page, is about your speaking um, engagements. So have that information on here. Okay, if you go down a little bit, go go down. That's a speaking, right? Yeah. Keep going. Speaking Keep page, going. yeah. See this. Yeah, would then it cool. then would go into Yeah. All right. I so it should be this yeah. um more at the top because this is what if someone lands on this page, speaking page, they want to know you're speaking where have you spoken at uh pre, um uh, firstly, most recently, So essentially and then mm -hmm. um go ahead. So let me ask you a question then in your professional opinion then. So like even with that, one of the tweaks I could do is literally just take off all the above, above that where it is right now, all the above that was, that's actually on my about page. And this really started with this, but maybe move the video up first too. Like right here, where it says right here, yeah. I am the Dowdy like start there. Hi, I'm Deb Dowdy and over the past 20 years or whatever, mm -hmm. start there and like get rid of the, the stuff on, above it. Um, I would caution against getting rid of because this is quite a lot of uh, content and it's it could be the backbone of this page. So if this information um, about Deb is exactly the same as the information on the about page. Yes, you can get rid of it because you already uh -huh. have that page for it. Um, if not, right, that's it's, that's what I'm saying. Oh, it's exactly the same. All of this. I'm almost positive. I, I have to double check. I'm almost okay. positive it is. Okay. If it and is, then we get into the speaking. Yeah, you can start straight with the speaking because if someone when when someone lands on the speaking page, this is the information they're seeking, and currently you have yeah. it buried under all of this, which is great information, yeah. but not appropriate for this page. Right. So, I would you recommend that I could even even take that that first part of the text that I'm talking about taking out. Right. And and even moving that maybe to the very end and just moving the other things up. Or I can just take it out completely. You can just take it out. Let's have a look. Is it exactly the same? 
I think so, Austin. I mean, I, I, we don't have to, I mean, I can go back and look. I, I think it is. And the reason why, it seems to be. the reason why we, huh? It seems to be. I think so. And the reason why we did that was in case, you know, like there was somebody that wanted to speak to me about uh, being a possible speaker at their upcoming summit thing. So what I did is I gave them the link to the speaking page, yeah. not just devdowdy.com and then go to my speaking page. I just gave yeah. them the link that, that went to the speaking page. And that's where, so they can see all the other things. Mm-hmm. So that's why I had that in mind. That's why we, that's why we kind of kept it that way. So yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a I useful I page. Can, I can, I can see users, um, wanting this information uh i would say just but i can through. swap it yeah you can swap it and having had a look at the content just from a quick glance it seems to be more or less the same so actually you can yeah. get rid of it because it's already on the about page okay, okay so gotcha. one more Thank you. um one more thing i'll mention and then i'll um summarize the three steps uh, right here, you have your appearances. If you can have links to them, that will be useful for users. Because if someone were to land on this page, they want to know about your speaking engagement. If this l link right here, Association of um, Florida Cor um, Colleges, if this is an actual recorded event, if, which is online, if you can link to it, that will be brilliant because then if it's not, no worries. Yeah, mo most of those, maybe two of them, w which one of them is the one that I have the video on. Um, most of them are not because a okay. couple of those were, a couple of those were virtuals and then the rest were actually live. I mean, there's, there's others, but Person. I never yeah. thought to do that, to be quite honest. It's it's quite it's very useful. One of the things people will do um, is to Google you, and this is actually a very useful information for them. Someone who's wanting to know a bit more about you, okay. and have the most recent first. Okay. Most recent first. Okay. Yeah, going back to the to the oldest. So. To sum up, okay. you your entity home, you have it. Um, use the about page. That's the first thing. The second thing will be to update your description on your entity home. Okay. And the third thing will be to have this your description um, consistent across the web. Two okay. sites or profiles will be your LinkedIn and your Facebook. Because essentially, this right here is an indication that Google is using these two sites as sources of information about you, along with your website. Okay. So those two will be ideal. Okay. And then, then the other thing is to add in the anchor text link. Yeah, so the two additional things would be if you can have um, just basic optimization um on the on the site especially with the about and speaking page differentiate in the the two of them and add in internal um linking contextual linking okay. as anchor text so this right here is an anchor text the um, this link uh the links you have on your navigation these are anchor text Right, it's the the word that you're linking with plus the link. So if you were to click on it, it will take you to that page. The contextual anchor text will be something, let's say this. Right, if you wanted to link to this to a page, you will just have this as a link, and when someone clicks on it, it will take them to the page you link to. So this would be an example of a contextual. Anchor text. Okay. And currently you have navigational anchor text. Okay. Okay. 
So to me, that it, it, maybe I'm using the wrong technology. Um, what you just showed me made more sense to me when you're saying it now, because it's like putting a hyperlink into it. Yeah, it is a hyperlink. Right? Is that what I'm thinking? Yep. Yeah. Yep, hyperlink, Hi hyperlink text. We call okay. SEOs call it an anchor text when it's think of it as a different word, <laughs> a different terminology. Right, like, right. Of a hyperlink. Okay, okay, gotcha. Okay, okay, and then change up my change up my um, speaking page. Okay, got it. So go ahead and um, play around with those, make those changes in roughly six to nine months, more along the nine months range. You after implementing the changes, uh, you'll see a sprout and you'll be able to claim that as your knowledge panel. Okay, so after that, you claim it. No. 